Are you ready to say goodbye to the constant ups and downs of the artist income roller coaster? Whether you're a full-time artist who wants to increase and stabilize your income, a part-time musician who wants to go full-time, or a hobbyist who needs to fund your passion projects, this podcast will equip you with the tools, resources, and inspiration to make it happen. My name is Bree Noble. I'm a musician, best-selling author, and educator whose mission is to help musicians like you to increase the income you're already making and tap into new income streams so you can create a more diverse, stable, reliable income from music and finally ditch the starving artist mentality. Now let's dive into The Profitable Musician Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. My name is Bree Noble, and I am thankful to be here today with Drew Schroeder from Schroeder Productions. We're going to be talking about his experience working in the Las Vegas nightclub scene and how he has taken that knowledge and experience and started helping other musicians with bookings. So I'm sure he's got a ton of cool stories that he can share with us. Um, so Drew, you want to just start, you know, go back in time, like how did you get involved in music and how did you get involved uh, starting out in the Las Vegas nightclub scene? It was actually a comic book story almost, you know, like, <laughs> I mean, so I grew up in Sterling Heights, Michigan, which is where I am now, which is hanging out with my family and, um, you know, hanging out with like old friends from back in the day. And I saw the movie Project X back in 2000. 12. And I was like, I've always wanted to throw a party like that because I used to go to the nightclubs in Pontiac, Michigan over here, like every single night, except for Wednesday, because like nothing was open on Wednesday. And then, so one of my Facebook pages went viral. It was called, it, it was named after the song. Oh, what was it? It was that live the Steve Aoki, the pursuit of happiness. And I tell you what, that was terrible. It was that, that whole page, it just went completely viral. And, and then people just kept on showing up to my house. And I actually kind of did have a Project X party. It was like 400, 500 people. And it was just a huge mess. <laughs> the cops showed up twice. Oh and then, <laughs> yeah, right. And people were up on my roof and it was just, just like Project X. <laughs> that's exactly what I asked for. And that's what I got. And luckily, you know, the whole neighborhood didn't catch on fire. But after that, I moved to Las Vegas and I joined a meetup group. And some people took me under their wing and some like pickup artists, dating coaches. And then they introduced me to the nightlife scene over there. And then I was like, wow, they got me into promoting nightclubs and strip clubs. And that's what I did. I have cold approached over 250,000 people. I sold VIP tables at various nightclubs. I've worked at every single nightclub and strip club in Las Vegas. And, and even the ones today, you know, I want to go to the new ones. I haven't been there, but you know. I send them to, you know, just still talk to friends, podcasts over there and stuff. And then, you know, decided to come back after COVID. And now I decided I wanted to start booking musicians. And I had a lot of bad experiences with um, coaches in general last year specifically. So instead of having just coaching, I started booking musicians on top of that. And I just threw in coaching for free. Because after I started getting all of these ads up on my Facebook and it was just coaches, coaching coaches to coach coaches. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't stand this. You know, how do you make $50,000 a month? You know, like I'll show you and you'll make $50,000 a month in your first nine days. And it's like, whoa, okay, this is terrible. So I might as well just like, I don't want to associate myself and my brand with that. So I might as well just give it away for free. So I decided I would teach business for free to musicians. So I started Stage Masterclass, which is my newsletter. And I teach musicians how to book their own gigs. I teach them how to network. I teach them how to attend red carpet events for free. I teach them how to get a yacht for their music video, stuff like that. Yeah. And <laughs> Just I, so that. that. Just get a yeah. yacht for your music video. <laughs> yeah, because it's... it's um. It's pretty simple once you know all of the little tricks. I'm just like spilling the beans. That's the whole thing about it. And on top of that, when someone just, they don't know what to do, they just want their music heard. What do you do? Join Stage Masterclass. And then, and by the way, this isn't like, I don't sell courses. I don't sell how to's or anything. It's all free. And so when they join, they get their feet wet. And then when they're established musicians, then they come back to me and then I book them. Got it. So it's, it's kind yeah. of like, um, you know, it's a model where you're training them up 
you're educating them. And then mm -hmm. when they're in a position where they can be valuable to you because they already have, you know, what it takes, then yeah. you can book them. Yeah. And I've seen other people do things like that, um, which I think is very, is very noble. And I appreciate yeah. that, uh, you know, assuming, right, that you can mm -hmm. get people that are going to be the right fit for you eventually, and you can book them out of that. So, you know, everyone still has to make money, right? I mean, we're not, we're right. not saying we can do everything for free. And, you know, we're all good, right? We still need to make money in some way. Yeah. So what it, so your model for making money is actually booking the artists? Yes. Okay, that's it. And Stage Masterclass might have some affiliate links to it, but it's not to any courses or anything. It's to like, you know, maybe a book or something like that or something off of Amazon. It's not like a, an affiliate link to a course or anything. They're all like, you know, really simple things like, you know, podcast studio. There you go. Like, I will show you what gear you need for like a podcast studio, stuff like that. Okay. I actually show showcase all of my stuff and I put it on my YouTube channel. That's smart. I like that. So let's talk about the Las Vegas scene because that's yep. really interesting to me. It's something that I know nothing about. I live in Southern California. Um, I, my Most of my career is booking church gigs and, okay. uh, and, and women's groups. So like this is completely outside of what I'm used to. So I would love to get more information on just okay. how you kind of got your feet wet in that, how the people that you met kind of helped you to know the right things to say or the right people to talk to, to get into that scene. I mean, I've just, after I moved to Michigan, I just kind of figured it out on my own. And I found this one app, it's called Atmosfy. Let me see if I'm getting it right. Yeah, Atmosfy. And what people could do if they want to start booking right now, basically, if they want to start booking their own gigs is go to that app, sign up, it's really easy. And then you scroll down or you go to the filter, you go live events, whatever city you're in, it shows you whatever venue has live events. And then you can start booking from there. Okay. But it's just that simple really, stuff like that. It's not completely that easy, right? You have to right. get in touch with well, the person yeah. who makes the decisions and yeah. you have to, you know, right. showcase That's, yourself in the right way. That's how you get leads. Okay. Next, what's like really good is if you have like a demo reel or an EPK, ideally you want like a demo reel that you can showcase around and a website. Um, and then also having an email list will definitely help as well because, you know, let's say if you're on Instagram and your Instagram gets shut off or Facebook, then you don't have anything. If you lose all of your fans, if TikTok gets banned because of, you know, politicians, then you don't have, you don't have that. So it's always email list is like the best business asset that you can have. And you can just build up a fan base from there and then just spoil your fans. From, yeah, no, like, you're speaking my yeah. language around the email list for yeah. sure. So I'm curious if you're if you're playing Las Vegas clubs and things, how do you yeah. build up your email list from there? What are some some ways that you can make it easy to get people on your email list from there? Well, for one, if you go on people's podcasts like like yours and also just networking. So I'm really big when it comes to networking, going out to the actual venues that you want to be around. There's two types of different ways that you can really start getting a name for yourself. There are two psychological triggers. One is called the mirror exposure effect. And that is exposing yourself enough times. If you think about it, if you hear a song on the radio for the first time and you're like, ah, that song's pretty okay, right? But you hear it over and over again. Then all of a sudden, for some reason, you're like, I really like this song. I don't know why. At first, I didn't like it. That's the mere exposure effect. And then there's also the propinquity effect, putting yourself in proximity of the people that you want to be around. And when you put yourself in proximity um, around the people that you want to be around, then um, it just, you know, if you want to hang around with musicians, then you go to places where musicians hang out, right? If you want to build that network or go to clubs where people listen to music, specific genres too. And, you know, there's a one specific way that I really like to, that I like to say when it comes to going out and networking is, you know, People, they like to be wallflowers. So one of the things I like to say is just go around and just cheers everybody. No one's going to tell you to screw off when you're just cheersing people, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you go around and you cheers everyone once, right, then everyone's like, whoa, who's this Drew guy? And then you go talk to the, you go back around and you talk to all the fun people. Those are the people that you want as a network. That's you know, all the people that are like, oh my gosh, hey, welcome back, back into the conversation. Yeah, no, those are really good tips. So Thank you. 
do you find that the fun people are the people yeah. that maybe might know the owner or might have some kind of in if they're like in the club a lot uh, that can yeah. get you introduced to the people that actually make the decisions on who plays the venue? One of the things that I like to do is I go to the venue very early. Mm -hmm. And when you go to the venue early, there's not a lot of people there. So that's when you can talk to the staff members, be friends with the staff, maybe even date a bartender you know, whatever you want to do. Right. And once you have that in, then you can start kind of, you know, hanging around their friends and then they have friends from there and have everyone just follow you on social media and then just grow your following from there. That's one. Way. And and so oh, what is the app that you mentioned where you find leads again? Appnessify. Can you spell that? Oh yeah. Okay. It's spelled kind of weird. That's why I was like, it's kind of hard for me to say sometimes. A-T-M-O-S-F-Y. Oh, atmosphy, like atmosphere. Yeah. Got yeah. it. Okay. It's got a little martini icon. Oh, got it. That makes yeah. sense. So it's almost like the, the TikTok of like uh, restaurants and stuff. Oh, okay. I'm going to check that out. Um, So as far as like the connection, right? Do you feel like it really, if you want to get bookings, you need to actually go there in person. Is there any way to get yeah. good bookings um, online? Well, that's one way is going out to like the venues, but that's a good way to build a fan base. What mm -hmm. I'd recommend is just cold email or cold calling the venues. So what I've noticed is cold emailing isn't as effective, but it's like you get, you feel less rejected when you get that no. But when you call the place up, you'll get the answer a lot quicker. You just have to make sure that you're not talking to like a hostess or you're talking to a concierge. You have to find that like, hey, can I speak to the manager real quick? Or, hey, I actually want to be booking a gig. Um, Can you lead me to the person that will actually get me to that spot? And there you go. Yeah, no, you're right. It It, it is much easier to email, less painful. But like you said, yeah. you could be following up forever and ever and you have no idea if the person is is actually reading or it's getting to the right person and it right. would be just so much easier to call. There is a really good way to check to see if they're actually reading your email. For one, like I don't use the email checkers, but you can check, you can use spam checkers to make sure that your email isn't sending off into the spam folder. Mm. How do you do that? Can you like, I don't know how to do it from the end of, you know, my end, like is my email going into someone's spam folder? Right. So there's two different websites that you can do it. I don't know them off the top of my head, but if you look it up, like spam checker or spam folder checker, Got email, oh, stuff like that, okay. then you can find them. They're all over the place and they're all free too. That's awesome. Like I've never thought to do that, but that makes a lot of sense. And then also what I've noticed is um, I believe it was February 1st or February 3rd, somewhere around there. It was early February where this came out that if you if you use a Gmail or a Yahoo or Hotmail, like a free account, then mm -hmm. you're more likely to end up in the spam folder as opposed to using a business email address. So that's why having it a website is super important now if you're going to establish yourself as a business because you could have like the best email script swipe file just copy and paste all you want but if you end up in the spam folder you won't get booked yeah i agree and it's so easy now to um you know use a, your own web domain and use you can use something like um you know google workspace or whatever google suite yeah. That's, and that's then you're exactly, really protected. Yeah. Your email is going to get to the top of the list. Yep. Cool. So I, I did want to talk about, you know, there's kind of those old school ways of, of networking that we all did in the past where passing out business cards or giving out CDs. Do you think that that's still successful? I believe me. I don't know. I mean, successful, you have to define successful. If you do it enough times, you'll get enough. <laughs> but if, I mean, I have a dot card sometimes when I'm out club promoting, but the thing is, Instead of giving you giving someone your card, it's better to ask them first and then so that way you have it and then you can text them. Mm, that's a good idea. Right. So you can say and then even on top of that, rather than just asking for their phone number, you can say, what's the best way of staying in touch? Uh. Those words specifically, because maybe they don't answer Instagram DMs. Maybe they answer phone call or text message or an email, you know? Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. And and. If you ask them that way, they're and they actually want to talk to you, they're not going to give you some way that, like you said, they're not even going to look at. Like if someone asked me, I would not say, send me a message on Facebook because I never think to look there. You know, yeah. I would say, go to my website. Here's my email address, et cetera. Or, you know, even nowadays, people have appointment setters mm -hmm. or like 
you know, for their Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that. So if you want to contact someone directly, it's better to just text them. Yeah, that's true. What do you think about like digital business cards? Are those useful? Digital business cards, like e-cards? Yeah. Or like, you know, where you can, um, just, you can, you can use mm. a QR code or something like that. QR code. Not so much because, you know, then you have to pull out your phone. Sometimes people don't have the app. I would rather just like, I would just say, what's your phone number? And then just text them the link to whatever social media. Okay. That is uh, not, not as fancy, but it's, it's easy and straightforward. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. I did want to ask, I know that um, recently like Universal Music Group pulled out of TikTok. Yes. Which is and and then there's all this stuff in news. the in the you know in the Congress about TikTok and all of that stuff. Yep. Do you think that there's a void that independent artists can fill right now on TikTok? I do. So I mean, you can really establish yourself on any social media, but right now, aside from the Congress, you know, trying to pull TikTok, one way is to just live stream on TikTok and then just perform or do your thing. Me, I was cold calling, cold emailing on the phone, just doing work stuff or practicing as a musician, right? And then over time, like the longer that you stay on, the more people that show up on your feed. And right now, uh, after after TikTok did that, YouTube started doing that. So even if TikTok goes away, people can still do this on YouTube as well. So you're just saying go about what you do in a day. Yeah. You're doing booking calls, you're practicing for gigs, and you're just live. Yep. And, you know... Because people like to just watch live streams. And as long as you don't say anything like ridiculous on the stream or do anything outrageous, then I mean, even if you go outrageous, you know, like you can probably go viral and there you go. Then people start booking you. Well, surely if that's part of your <laughs> brand, it makes sense. But right. If you if you want to be infamous, that is right. I just I think it's interesting because I am not a person that wants to go on and just watch someone else, watch someone else live streaming. Well, right. Why do you think people would want to do that? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not someone that really watches live streams too much, but Twitch and Kick are really big and there's a, that's all they do is live stream. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So you're saying- There's an audience for everything. There's an audience for that on TikTok. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I want to know, like, I want to know how you're practicing, you know? And if you think about it, if you're just practicing in your room, you're pretty much putting on a show, especially if people start liking how good you're playing right? And that's building an audience. And then people start following you from there. Yeah. It's, it's certainly multitasking. That's for sure. Cause you got to <laughs> right. practice anyway. And I, I remember yeah. when, Just set when, up a tripod. Face, when Facebook live was new, I remember I started doing practicing on there like once a week and I would use it to advertise for an upcoming gig. And I thought yeah. this is great. Like I have to practice anyway. I may as well you know, yeah. use this. Yeah. Cool. Well, I love that you're, you're helping so many musicians, especially with booking. I know that a lot of people I work with really struggle with that and can need, need all the help they can get and, and the confidence um, tips and things like that. Is there anything else you'd like to say to up and uh, up and coming musicians right now to encourage them that it's not as hard as they might think it is? It's just, it's, it's difficult building a business. It's difficult building a brand. I, I promise you it's worth it. If that's what you really want to do, that's what, you, that's what you need to do. Like, and it's once you get going, you'll know. Does that make sense? Is that yeah, like... No, it totally does. I mean, for me, when I was doing my booking, it took yeah. about a year, but at, at some point I had more incoming bookings than I had to make outgoing calls. And that's when I'm like, okay, this is really working. <laughs> yeah. Right. So yeah. The thing is that you really have to pace yourself and the fact that you, that we're all chasing happiness, right? So you have to learn to enjoy the moment, but you still got to put in the work, right? Yeah. So many people get burnt out all the time. And so they just quit. You have to learn how to surf the waves of life. Otherwise you'll just swim out to the middle of the ocean, get a cramp in your leg and sink to the bottom. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You got to enjoy the process as well as the reward. Otherwise you'll burn out. And I love that you said, you know, anything worth doing is, is going to be hard. It is. It's going to be hard. If it's easy, yeah. then everyone would do it. Exactly. And I tell you what, if you really want to have your own business, it's going to be hard forever. <laughs> that's the part, you know, and that's the fun part. That's what I love about it. I love chasing fires, you know, mm -hmm. like we all, it's called in positive psychology, it's called the hedonic treadmill. We're always chasing happiness, right? Mm -hmm. But thing is, there's, I would say there's two different types of happiness. There's hedonic and then there's eudaimonia. Hedonic is, you know, chocolates, caressing, um, pleasure, right? But eudaimonia, that's what really, what we really need. And that is feeling grateful for yourself, 
mm-hmm. you know, being grateful and just appreciation for the people that you love, people around you and everything, everything that you can really focus on. And people, they miss that part. They just, they're like, I'll be grateful once I get to this point, once I start booking those gigs. And that's not the case. Be happy right now. And then you enjoy the process going forward. So you can ask yourself right now, if I really wanted to be happy, if I really wanted to be grateful for something, what could I be grateful for in this moment? Yeah, no, I, I love that. And I, I would also add purpose. You know, people need to feel like what they're yeah. doing has purpose. That's going to give you them that deep sense of happiness. That's the why. Like, why am I doing this? Because, you know, you got to think of the carrot and the stick, right? But on the other side, you also have to learn how to get there by being grateful in the moment. By asking yourself quality questions, not why does this always happen to me? Mm. But instead you say something like, when I get this done, how great will I feel? How much better will I feel? How much will this change my life? It's the quality of questions that we ask ourselves that change our destiny. Mic drop. That's great. I love that. (laughs) Well, why don't you let our listeners know how they can connect with you and how they can get on your newsletter? Okay. So my newsletter is stagemasterclass.com. My booking website is schroederproductions.com and people can find me on Instagram or on Facebook. I have TikTok, but I don't really use it that much, at least not for that purpose. I have another brand that's like a side project brand that I use it for. Mm. And I know you got some really exciting news recently. So I'd love to have you let people know um, regarding a booking client that you just got. Yes. So I you said that this was going up in May, right? Well, yes. by the time this is out, I should be booking for Jamel Knight because today I just got off the phone with him. Before this podcast, I got off the phone and he said that he wants to work with me. And he's a really big R&B singer. And hopefully by now people will see his shows on my website. And I'm like super excited to be working for him. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, And then also over the last few months, I've had the privilege of meeting so many really nice musicians. So I've been working with, say, uh, Massimo Sims, and he's sang for David Foster. And I've, and I helped him get to that point. And he's really grateful for me. And he's a good friend of mine. There's also Dr. Love Beats. And he... (laughs) He started a band called Who I Am, and he's booking gigs now. Matter of fact, you know, I only had three phone calls with the guy, and he's going international. He's going international soon. And also, I've been working with Darren Joseph, and he is like, he made that song, the the whistle song by Dipset. So and yeah, so the the people that I've been working with, I'm friends with all of them. I only work with the musicians directly. Otherwise, it's just you know, if I just speak to the manager, then they could be another booking agent too. Then it's agent to agent to agent. Just like how, you know, same thing on Facebook. When I see those ads, there are coaches, coaching coaches to coach coaches. And I don't like that either, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, cut out the middleman. Exactly. I go straight to the musician and that's who I talk to. That's great. Well, thank you so much, Drew. This is great. You guys go check out, check out stage, or sorry, performancemasterclass.com. Oh, stage masterclass. Sorry, stagemasterclass.com. And, um, they can follow me on Instagram, Drew Club Promoter. Perfect. Thanks so much, Drew, for giving us all of your insight and your experience over the years. Bree, you're amazing. Thank you so much for letting me on your show. Thanks for listening to The Profitable Musician Show. I would love to know your takeaways and aha moments from this episode. Leave me a comment over at ProfitableMusician.com so I can bring you more of the information, interviews, and resources that you love. Thanks to Rondi Fay, one of my Academy members, for providing the music for our podcast. You can check her out at rondifay.com. That's R-A-N-D-I-F-A-Y.com. Just remember, knowledge is power, but without implementation, it is useless. And inspiration without action is merely entertainment. But I know you're not just a dreamer, you are a doer. And I promise I'll be here every week to support you and remind you that you can be a profitable musician.